Because a lot of bands follow trends, you know, and it's fatal. Because yeah. you can't please all the people all the time. You know. We don't play for you, we play for us. And if we like it, then we put it out. And if you like it as well, that's a bonus. But it's not necessary. Yeah. Good morning, guys. Joey here again with some music news. So recently, Lemmy's ashes were enshrined in his metal statue that's been installed at one of the biggest heavy metal festivals in the world, Hellfest in Close on France. What better news article to read than the base magazine? So, unique Hellfest ashes ceremony memorialises Lemmy Kilmeister forever. The first international memorialisation of Motorhead's Ian Lemmy Kilmeister on June 23rd at Hellfest in Clisson, France, delights tens of thousands. After a two-year absence due to COVID, one of the biggest heavy metal festivals in the world, Hellfest in Clisson, France, returned with two sold-out weekends, packed with some of the biggest names in rock and metal music. It also hosted the first international memorialisation of the Grammy Award-winning rock legend Motorhead's Lemmy Kilmeister, with a ceremony featuring band members Phil Campbell and Mickey D, which was witnessed by tens of thousands of fans. It was a very unique ceremony for a very rare and much-loved man, said Motorhead's manager Todd Singerman. Lemmy was a true road warrior and starting with this historic Hellfest ceremony continued to make sure he remains one. Now this statue actually replaced a it replaced this but this was installed in 2016 and the plaster was in disrepair and crumbling so they've made this mad metal 36 foot statue of lemmy also like to point out that there's a life-size statue at the rainbow bar and grill uh, lemmy lived around the corner from the rainbow but they they call his home as in where he lived, his second home, because his first home was the Rainbow Bar and Grill, where he could be often seen playing his slot machines at the end of the bar and having a Jack and Coke. Although in the end he was drinking vodka and orange juice because that was a healthier option. So the proceedings began when the Scorpions asked Phil to join them on stage for a roaring end of set Rocky Locker Hurricane. Mad fucking song. After the band had taken their final bows, Phil and Mickey returned to the stage to announce the enshrinement of Lemmy's ashes at the huge 36-foot monument of Lemmy created by sculptor Carolyn Brissett on site, explaining the significance of bringing Lemmy to his fans in this unique way. A tribute video to Lemmy then played on the festival screens as Phil and Mickey made their way to the massive monument where Lemmy's ashes are housed in a miniature replica of the urn used at his funeral at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Hollywood and lead the audience in raising a toast to Lemmy. Anyway, the Hellfest ceremony launches what will be a long-term series of memorialisations to the legendary frontman, which will see portions of his ashes enshrined at various places of great personal significance to Lemmy around the world. Recently, close friends of Lemmy's received bullets containing small portions of his ashes so as he could remain close to those he loved. Now, those who received the bullets were Whitfield Crane from Ugly Kid Joe, Rob Halford from Judas Priest, Michael Munro from Hanoi Rocks, Doro Petch from Warlock, and Ricky Rackman the host of the MTV Headbangers Ball and also he was in a band called Virgin. And if you look up their social media, you will see them with their bullets. You cannot overstate just how much of a man of the people Lemmy was, said Motorhead's manager Todd Singerman, which is why it is so important to enshrine him in his favourite places so we can always be with his fans and they can be with him. We have several places already outlined and all are places Lemmy truly loved on and off the road. What an awesome idea. Rocking in paradise forever. Well, especially here. You're rocking in paradise, Lemmy. So these ceremonies will continue to allow the fans to, to congregate and honour Lemmy beyond his central resting place at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Hollywood, California. At the same time, celebrating Lemmy's truly international spirit, presence and immortality 
and as was seen by the reaction of both the fans and global media on June 23rd, this completely unique commemoration will not only see Hellfest 2022 remembered as the year Lemmy finally returned to one of his favourite touring haunts, but also as confirmation that Lemmy lives forever. I just think this is a beautiful idea, a beautiful thing for Lemmy. Fans for years and decades to come will be able to honour the man that was Lemmy from Motorhead, Lemmy Kilmeister. Anyway, I had the pleasure of seeing Lemmy at the Carnival of Sins tour, Motley Crue, in 2005, 3rd of December 2005 in Sydney. I'm going to add the what songs that I did here. I can't really tell you much about it because, well, I mean, some of the best times you can't actually remember. So, let me, there you go. It was fucking mad, dude. It was mad. I loved, I loved, I don't know, I was in awe. So, like, when I say my first concert's Motley Crue, my first band that I actually saw fully live was Motorhead because they supported Motley Crue. So I, I've got the pleasure of and the memory of being there. But I just can't really tell you much about it. What did I learn that night? I learned that night that you should wear socks with fishnet stockings. Anywho, thanks so much for listening, guys. And all right, thanks, guys. Bye.